What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay Campbell and I'm making a quick commercial here for seercustom.com, my revolutionary cosmeceutical peptides company, co-founded with my business partner, Nick Andrews, who happens to be one of the world's top formulators. We have the revolutionary Oxano Grow, which completely regrew my hair. If you guys saw my hair about a year ago, I was almost bald. I even had the micropigmentation program from uh, Advantis. And now I've completely regrown my hair. That's just with version one. Version two is now in the marketplace or will be very, very soon. And it is three to five times as more effective than the current version or the original beta version of Oxano. We also have Royal Blue Serum and Sky Blue Cream, which will completely upgrade your face. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I have a pretty good complexion. I use it regularly. My wife swears by it. It will reduce fine lines and wrinkles, dramatically improve elasticity, and just the overall look and feel of your face. You feel great on both of them. You can also use them with red light therapy. There's all sorts of great stuff. So go to a seercustom.com. And if you're a first time customer, use the coupon J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I appreciate all you guys. And I send you tremendous love and light. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell, of course, the founder of the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very incredibly humbled, honored, and privileged today to be joined in my virtual Zoom studio with an amazing man, Leo Zagami. Leo's bio is incredible, but first, Leo, man, it is an honor. How are you today? Very well. Uh, actually, it could be better, but uh, uh, one of my collaborators uh, mysteriously died in Norway, and uh, I received the news in the last few hours, and it kind of like, uh, it's, it's like we, we collaborated a long time, and with a series of investigations, especially in Norway, where I used to live, uh, and, and we uncovered so much over there. So it's a little bit suspicious uh, the way he suddenly died. The local news gives uh, the cause of death, death as COVID, but then again, most of his friends don't believe it, and he was posting until a week ago like he was uh, feeling perfectly fine. So we wow. are a little bit kind of wondering what's going on, especially because Norway has been a place where uh, a lot of my work uh, was based on a few years back. Wow. I'm very sorry to hear that, Leo. Well, I, well we, we, if you want, we can talk about him in the podcast. That's unfair. Well, uh, I mentioned that would be great because I cite him in volume one and in volume two of my confessions. Uh, he's, he was a fellow journalist. His name was Hans Garder. And so definitely it's great that uh, you can give me this platform uh, uh, he was uh, one of the few people in Norway to actually be like-minded like me and you and uh, touching these subjects. And uh, and it was not easy for him because he's very close-minded Scandinavian, sure. very, um, uh, very addressed to this uh, new world order ideology, which actually at times uh, takes Scandinavia as an example for sure. the rest of the world. <laughs> so sure. it's like... Yeah. Yeah, kind of like, like they're doing to Australia right now. I think they're making mm-hmm. Australia is probably the most locked out, the most draconian stuff is going on there. But you're right. The Scandinavian part of the world has been well, an experiment. We also have uh, this whole subject of Satanism, which became predominant when black metal became a very popular music genre that yes. actually it digs into a background, a milieu of real Satanism that is practiced sure. over there, aside from the pagan- paganism, which of course is typical of the Viking uh, uh, areas. Okay, so let me, let me um, again, we'll talk about your, um, your compatriot, your partner. I, again, I apologize, my deepest sympathies. Um, so guys, just a little bit about Leo's bio. So first off, it is an honor to have you on the show here today. And for some of you guys that are you know not familiar with Leo, this guy is very truthfully, one of the greatest authors on the planet when it comes to understanding the world, the mysterious world of the esoteric, of, you know, the satanic, of the secret societies, of of like what is really going on here. I can tell you guys from reading this book, 
that he has uncovered almost everything, but let me just give you uh, your bio. So 20 books he's written, which is amazing. I mean, I've written six and I can't even imagine that. Um, different parts of the world in various languages. He's the, he, he is the former president of the Ordo Illuminatorum Universalis. He's the son of the late Dr. Ilio Zagami, who died in 2010, who was a well-known Jungian analyst. Most of the people today don't even know who Jung was. You, you, Carl, you, Carl Gustav Jung, uh, I must say, was probably somebody who not only dealt into psychiatry, but uh, in the private, uh, he also investigated very much the occult. And right. he right. wrote uh, The Seven Sermons to the Dead, which is like a Gnostic text. He even wrote this book, which was published posthumously, which is this red book, which is full of esotericism. But of course, uh, when you are a, a doctor, when you are a psychiatrist, and you are uh, talking to the world, uh, you uh, at times, uh, these kind of people hide their interest for the occult, uh, because uh, in the, in, let's say that in the academic world, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not very popular to be interested in this kind of subject. Sure, sure. Um, I'll just finish your bio a little bit. Just again, um, he's very, very connected to some very illustrious luminaries, uh, such as his family members. He was actually, um, again, I apologize, I'm reading this, the grandson of Senator and essayist Leopoldo Zagami and son of Jessica Lyon Young, who was a member of the family of the Queen Mother of England. In turn, the daughter of the writers Henry Lyon Young and Felicity Mason, the latter collaborator of William Burroughs and Brian Gisson, known as a writer under pseudonym of Anne Cumming, which a lot of people are familiar with Anne Cumming's work. So again, dude, you have massive major connections. And again, I'm humbly honored that you would be on this podcast today. We're going to go very deep on what's going on in this world. But let me ask you, before we get into our talking points, as I always do on the Jay Campbell podcast, can you give me <laughs> your opinion? of just what is going on right now. This is April 8th, 2021st, just in case this doesn't show up for a couple of months. What is going on, Leo? Uh, at the geopolitical level or at the religious level or at the spiritual level? Because I think all, all three, tackle whichever one you want to talk about first. Of course, because they are, in a way, all interconnected. Yes, they are. Uh, for example, uh, the leaders of the world and religions, uh, uh, the traditional religions, should be uh, meeting next year in Kazakhstan, in Astana. They were supposed to meet this year. But suddenly, something has happened in this Passover in Israel. Uh, suddenly, there is somebody who is uh, claiming to be the Messiah and that uh, the, the, the Jewish uh, people seem to be uh, indicating uh, as such. He's wow. uh, known as Rabbi Shlomo Yedua Shita, Shita and his uh, name at the moment uh, that they use uh, is uh, Giziaku Ben David. I'm very skeptical, to tell you the truth. I think uh, actually he might be one of the antichrist of this age. But the fact that during this Passover, suddenly in Israel, they came to the conclusion that he might be the Messiah and that they need to accelerate the times towards a messianic age, which in Israel should have uh, actually arrived in the year 2240, I think. So, I mean, we are still far away from it, but if you pray enough, you can anticipate those messianic times. And we know they never recognize Jesus as the Messiah. Now, I went and investigated this, uh, this, whole, uh, uh, this whole topic of this guy and how genuine he, he is. And, and as I said, I'm very, very skeptic. Actually, I think that is one of those false prophets that were announced in uh, in in uh, the in the gospel and and basically in the gospels and and then we have the fact that, that he was almost prepared by another character called Ishak Kaduri this rabbi who um, was very close also to Netanyahu he died in 2006 but the year before he died he announced that he had met even the messiah wow. and, and 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 so there is this whole thing going on because you see, while, uh, the, 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 while all this is going on, the Vatican has been accused of digging under 
the, uh, what is now, of course, the, the Dome of the Rock, where you have right. this big mosque, to dig the DNA of King David and to produce uh, some kind of, uh, um, of Messiah artificially genetically created in, in some way created out of nothing. Right. Uh, so there is also this point, but I think that in this day and age, we are full of uh, false prophets. Right. Like it was indicated uh, uh, to us, uh, mainly in the book of Revelation, uh, which is supposedly written by John of Patmos, though some people have been always debating this, uh, the, the, the authenticity, or I mean the fact that, not the authenticity because it is authentic, but the fact that it was John of Patmos. In any case, we are living in unprecedented times. We are um, close to that revelation, that apocalypse that of right. course was announced by the Christians. And so to see the Pope going down to the Middle East and march in Iraq, celebrating a mass in the city of Ur, where it's said to be the birthplace of Abraham and so the Abrahamic right. religions. The fact though that uh, Jesus is almost put on the side by the Pope and, and he never really is given a proper mention, even if he's supposed to be a Christian. Right. He's, he's, he's kind of like really rushing in the last couple of years since 2000. Let's say that uh, we have had this increase in, some, in, in an event that for some people have been impossible to even imagine until a few years back. When I used to say that the Pope uh, would be a Jesuit and he will be working for the creation of a one world religion, people thought I was just a conspiracy theorist, a, a crazy yeah. guy. So when I um, started my exposure work, it was uh, autumn 2006. And the first one to give me a, a break so I could actually be known to the, to the big public was David Hyde, who picked up on a couple of articles that I had written on this blog. Uh, this blog that I had put together because I had my life threatened within the Monte Carlo Lodge, which I belonged to at the time. Right. And I thought, okay, I'm going to leave these people, I'm going to leave the New World Order set up, all these Illuminati groups, and I'm going to expose them all. Now, at that time, my life became hell. How and old were you, by the way? How old were you at this point? 56. Okay. 56, I'm now 51. And uh, I had been involved, though, in secret societies since the age uh, of 23. Right. I was initiated in April 1993 uh, into the Illuminati of the New World Order by Prince Aliada di Monreale. Um, later on, I was initiated in the Ordo Tempi Orientis. I was initiated in the Fraternity of Rosa Cruciano Antigua and in many other secret societies, which, of course, uh, are part of the truths that are unveiled in the book that yes. we're going to be discussing today, Invisible Master, as well as the other books which I have written, the whole Confessions of an Illuminati series. Now, it's very important to understand that, that most of these groups don't want their truths brought outside of a specific circle, no? So what happened here? Why did I decide suddenly? Because I was threatened, because there was an internal war that went on between 2003 to 2006. It was an internal war. Internal war meaning that it was lodges against lodges sure. and groups against groups. But when I saw in June 2006, and I was uh, only a month from, from having my child born, uh, my first born, my child is the only one I had there. Really. Sure. And, 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 I, and, and that unfortunately I never saw again after 2008 because what happened is that gradually from the moment I started to bring this disclosure, I was immediately threatened. Right. I was living in Norway, in Oslo, that's why I mentioned earlier also my collaboration, very important with Hans Garde, because he was one of the few journalists locally that uh, uh, even at his own risk, he 
decided to collaborate with me. And it wasn't an easy choice. Um, and I hope that it didn't cost him his life because, yeah. you know, unfortunately, there's a lot of suspicion on this point at the moment. Well, God rest his soul. And uh, even if you did, you know, in, in the veil of uncovering the truth, that's what's most important for humanity. So, you know, may he rest Absolutely. in peace. And, and I mean, he did it always very, com very convinced of his mission. Right. And uh, I was, okay, so what happened was in November, early November 2006, the Secret Service, the police and some social workers came to uh, the home where I used to live in the center of Oslo. Uh, and uh, um, and they threatened both me and my uh, my former wife. She resisted for a little while, but then she gave in to the enemy because they offered their sure. things. And then in the end, people get weak and they yep. decide to betray. Unfortunately, this is what happens. And it's very sad that even people close to you end up betraying. So right. I ended up then uh, fortunately finding my uh, present wife, uh, which is also uh, with me, uh, the, 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 the co-owner of my publishing company, Kurson Perficious. She edits my book these days. So That's we have awesome. definitely, and she was very supportive of me, even if in Italy she was threatened because in the end I had to flee Italy. Right. The reason why I'm here in Palm Springs is not because I'm having a great joyful time here in Palm Springs, uh, being some kind of locus uh, eater, how you how you say, some kind of uh, indulgent uh, lifestyle. Right. No, I simply uh, happened to be here because it was uh, a place uh, we decided to move uh, in a moment that was very difficult for us, and we found uh, the opportunity, and uh, we took it. And uh, thanks to God's uh, really God God's mercy and God and God's help, we were able to save our lives and to not get killed in the process in sure. Italy because what happened there was that in uh, 2008, uh, uh, I was uh, arrested for espionage in Norway. I had to leave, flee Norway uh, after I was uh, arrested for espionage, after my former wife basically sold me out because wow. her brother wanted to join the secret service and, and basically make a career out of selling me out. It was just wow. something terrible. Sorry, man. Uh, in any case, I uh, soon after got uh, put on my uh, side this fantastic woman, which is uh, my wife, Christy Zagami, which was, by the way, written also a couple of books called Confessions of an Illuminati Princess, where she talks about her, her, her part of the story. That's awesome. And it, it definitely is interesting because it gives a woman perspective of the whole thing. Sure. And also an external perspective, which is not my own. Awesome. Well, we'll link to those books in this interview so people can find out more about those because I think that's a unique angle because I think women would love to get more information about that. So we'll definitely link to those. Absolutely. That would make, uh, definitely will make my wife very happy. Um, and so what happened is that uh, I soon after uh, met uh, what became after my uh, second wife, my current wife, and we um, moved to Italy because I was living in Norway, but I could no longer stay in Norway because I actually had to flee Norway because I had an accusation of espionage that was kept until 2010 when eventually in February 2010, they dismissed the accusations. The PST, which is uh, the local uh, security police, dismissed the accusations against me for espionage, and, and the whole thing uh, came to an end. But for a couple of years, I was uh, all my accounts were frozen, so wow. everything, uh, all my books were everything was taken from me. I didn't have anything anymore. I wow. only had a little suitcase. I managed to flee Norway with at one point when they told me that basically uh, if I stayed, they would have arrested me. And so I was already stopped and put in a jail cell for 24 hours. And that was a terrible experience. Two times they did this. And uh, the last time was on the 22nd of July of the year uh, of the Lord 2008. So at that point, uh, I went back to Italy and with uh, my current wife, we lived there in relative peace. But uh, at the same time, she uh, had uh, worked for a long time in uh, Japan. 
as an actress, as a model. She had many connections in Japan. So I went in Japan, actually met with a guy called Benjamin Fulford. Yeah, I know Ben. Yep. And this guy, unfortunately, I say unfortunately, uh, because uh, initially it was a good, uh, good thing what he did. He uh, pushed me to write books and to publish them in Japan, which seemed to be more easy than other parts of the world. And I ended up publishing six books in Japan. But uh, I only did two books with him because uh, after a couple of books, I sensed that he wanted to sensationalize things. He was coming there and asking me, come on, can you do an evocation? Can you do this? Can-? I mean, the guy didn't understand the seriousness of certain things, maybe, or he simply wanted to sensationalize things when they shouldn't be sensationalized. If, if so, so let me ask you, you know him, is he a bullshit artist or is he putting like... Unfortunately, tr- I discovered that when I was in Japan that he works for the Chinese Kung Man uh, Freemason, which is basically wow. part of the Chinese mafia, works directly with the Chinese state. Wow. And so he, when he came to, at uh, one point after that, he came to Italy and I fronted him. I remember we were in a taxi on our way to a, an interview. And I said to him, I said to him, listen, uh, you have to tell me who, are you working with the Chinese? And he confirmed he works with the Chinese. Wow. So at that point, I actually uh, had the evidence of it because when I was in his home, he didn't know. He left me in, in, in his home for a while with my, my wife, and he had on the on the actual, um, how you say, on, on the walls of his house, he had the symbols of the Chinese Hong men, wow. and, and and with the compass and the square and everything. So I photographed all this and I put it actually uh, as evidence of him working with the Chinese in the the book in volume two of my confessions. Wow, and. Uh, the thing is that he um, he was actually quite open about the fact that he was working with these Chinese Illuminati, but he thought that they will help him help him in in fighting the Western Illuminati, and that was like a little bit naive of him, or maybe yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I don't know. He ended up interviewing, of course, the now defunct uh, Rockefeller, right? And that interview managing to uh, give the guy a lot of credibility. And so still today, even if he's a complete con artist and he has done so much disinformation, right. being kind of like spilling this information for, for 15, 16 years now, he, he, he still has some people who follow him. And I don't, don't understand how it's possible. I, I'm really, sometimes I'm kind of, I have problems in getting my work out. Right. You know, people are just gullible and people love to hear stories that are big fish stories. You know, again, the goldfish report, right? Mm. Absolutely. People love bullshit. And as you know, people like to be lied to. It's easier to lie to people than tell them the truth. I mean, look around, look at all these people. They're all out there, you know, give me the vaccine. Yeah. Oh. No, I mean, no, that's it's, the it's world but, 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 but now, after all these years, it makes even more sense why the Chinese will use him to wage also war sure. in, 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 in what was the truth movement, the with their own brand of disinformation yep. and their own brand of fake news. Because in 2006, when, he, when I was coming out with my information, then a few months later, suddenly I hear about this guy. And then, you know, I connect with this guy and... Uh, Another figure that contacted me uh, around 2010, I think, uh, was David Wilcock. He wanted to suddenly connect with uh, um, with Benjamin Fulford, and 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 after they made this connection, they went on the tangent on all kinds of crazy stuff, uh, and at times it involved also me uh, when it came down to these bonds that uh, there was this whole story of the bonds and I was actually involved uh, at one point and I, as soon as I saw what they were all about the the legal nature of these uh, of these things I immediately said block that's it for me you know I start and, and because I 
sincerely want the people not to be led astray right. by fake news. You like this uh, Jezara, Nezara, and all these. Right. Yes. yes. Okay, uh, so let me, let me ask you a very important question, and I know you're going to tell me the truth. So is there any difference between Wilcock and Fulford at all, or are they just both complete con artists? They are complete con artists. That's I'm sad to say that Wilco could jump on the bandwagon of the whole QAnon thing and made it even worse. Because I always said to people, be very careful with this whole QAnon thing. It, it sounds and looks like a psyop, a psychological operation. It looks like a product of Fort Bragg. It has, it's basically coming out of nothing. And suddenly, people like me, people like... Uh, Joan, people like uh, I, people have, who have been doing this exposure work for many years were put aside because suddenly everybody was a QAnon fanatic and, and thought they had the ultimate truth in their hands. Right. And, and, and I was like, I was always warning people about the danger of this QAnon. Of course. And when I started to see Certain people I met, there is, um, let's say in the last few years since I moved here in America, really getting so passionate, even that the elections uh, not only were stolen, but that Trump was still the president and all that. And it wasn't really making any sense. Right. I thought this is really leading people into a dangerous, dangerous trap. And when I... Uh, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not a secret that I have interviewed Enrique Tario, that I have uh, many connections with the Proud Boys and with other militias in the U.S. It's always been like that. Uh, also, it's in the nature of me, both as a journalist, but also as a person who is of conservative values. Sure. But uh, when I saw all these people led astray by this, this information, I wanted to know more about this phenomenon. So... No wonder that after you have the Jack D'Angeli of the situation, we used to go to all the UFO events, ending right. up with the horn, bull horns, uh, the, the whole show in, in this, in what basically became a trap for the whole movement that unfortunately marked <laughs> in infamy over 70, well, 75 million voters that voted for Trump. So, I mean, yep. this is... Uh, it's, it's, it's for, but I was one of the few people that immediately after the first uh, uh, couple of uh, um, events that took place in Washington, D.C., I think one was in November, the other one was in December. Yep. And I had some friends who went there and they said immediately, no, don't go in January. This is a trap. It's and the up. people, yeah. and yeah, it's a setup. And the people who actually followed my advice still nowadays, including people from the Proud Boys, from the Oak Peepers, from the Free Percenters, they thanked me very much yep. for having uh, uh, helped them out in this. Yep. And I I, by the way, I knew it too. I knew it too. I, 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 I knew. And, you know, Michael went, you know, Michael Jacob, my business partner, went, uh, but he didn't leave. He was in his hotel for the most of the thing, you know, to watch and to observe. Um, and he'll tell you stories. You know, I don't want to interrupt your conversation, but he'll tell you stories. But it was clearly a setup. Whole yeah. setup. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you see, there were very strange things that happened uh, in the last couple of years, three years. You know, there was also uh, Roger Stone, who suddenly was uh, um, yeah. arrested uh, in front of the cameras of CNN and all that. And I was actually talking with Roger a few hours before on Facebook. And suddenly then Roger took my friendship away on Facebook and everything. And I didn't understand wow. that at the beginning. Then... After the whole process finished and he was pardoned, he told me that the judge apparently told him to have no contacts with Leo Zagami. Are you serious? The judge on a case that is so big in the United States of America that, of course, all the media talked about, people don't even know who Leo Zagami is. Right. But for some reason, uh, the judge had the he had one of the people involved, Jerome Corsi, and this Jerome Corsi said he had met me in Rome. Never met the guy in my life. Right, right, right. Yeah, he's a liar too. Another disinformant. Yep. And so I will say that when it comes down to David Wilcock, uh, the crazy thing was this. 
I arrived in May 2019 here in the United States. It wasn't easy for me. Uh, as I told you, the last few years especially were difficult. Why? Because after I published those books in Japan, suddenly in 2012, I started to publish these books also in Italy. Sure. But what happened between 2010 and 2012? The Vatican had contacted me a guy called Antonio Leonardo Montoro from the Vatican Secret Services had contacted me, Vatican Intelligence, and contacted me and had offered money on behalf of the Vatican to not print those books that were printed in Japanese in Italian. Wow. So the offer was made by him and by a guy called Marinelli. Marinelli used to be called by John Paul II, the general. He was in charge of his security. He was one of the last people he saw before he died. So imagine wow. what kind of people contacted me. Big, wow. Very big people. Now Marinelli has died, but Antonio Leonardo Montoro is still alive. And in fact, in Italy, he was one of the people who pushed the QAnon nonsense, giving wow. it credibility because, you know, he's a guy who's involved with the Italian... Uh, the, 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 Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell. Quick commercial for the Optimized Tribe with U.S. Navy SEAL Michael Jaco and I every Monday night at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. There is not a single group online where you will get the highest level intel that Michael and I can provide you from mastering intuition to fully optimizing your hormonal health to improving your fitness, to raising your vibration and increasing your consciousness. There isn't a single group online with two dudes like Michael and myself helping people become the best version of their self. It's literally $99 a month and you get a 90 minute call with me and Michael every single Monday night. Don't wait another second. Sign up now at the link, theoptimizedtribe.com. I appreciate you guys and I send you tremendous love and light. So well, let me ask you this. Would you then say then, and I don't mean to cut you off, this is all one giant Jesuit conspiracy amidst multiple governments Heads of state, the Vatican. I mean, it's all just one giant elaborate hoax. I would say that it's one giant elaborate conspiracy, but it's not only the Jesuits. There is also the financing of the Sabbatean Frankists that are also heavily involved, especially in the esoteric world, because the Sabbatean Frankists were the ones that uh, pushed all the black magic that then ended up with Alistair Crowley and all that. I mean, uh, Alistair Crowley... Uh, came out of the theosophical mi milieu. But Madame Blavatsky had a master, had a mentor called Max Theon. He himself uh, was connected to the Sabbatean Frankist. The Asian Brotherhood, which was itself. Right. The Green, I mean, the dark, what were they called? The Green, what were they called? Um, the Asian Brotherhood. They had a, um, man, they had a name. Yeah, the Green Dragon were, Society? The Green Dragon Society or something like that, no, right? Well, there, there is, yeah, of course, there was also that link to later on. Uh, but uh, that was uh, linked to uh, to Japan and right. already more recent, like 100 years ago when things uh, with Trebish Lincoln and all that. I'm, I'm saying here about the very early stages. I'm talking about the period between... The period in which the Golden Rose Qua was codified Masonic and came out as an organization, the Golden Rose Cross came out in Germany soon after the Asian Brotherhood in the 17, maybe 70s, 80s, that, that period. But all that period coincides really with Jacob Frank, who, who, who claimed to be the, the, the reincarnation of uh, uh, Sabbatai Zevi, who himself declared himself to be the Messiah in 1666. So up until now, that's why at the beginning of the show, I talked about the, the danger of this Arabi, Rav Shlomo, Yehuda, Shiita, and about uh, the, 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 the danger of this kind of messiahs from the Jewish world. Because if this guy is given so much importance, is going around in a limo at the moment in the middle of, of Jerusalem, going to uh, organize gatherings in front of the wall, uh, prayer and all that, and, and is taken seriously, this might lead either to him being recognized and constructed right. the fair temple, which is of the culmination of the one world religion project. And this will also um, this will also justify the reason why they're not having the, uh, the meeting in uh, Kazakhstan, in uh, Astana, which is now known as Nur Sultan, this year. 
because of course something big is happening. So when you're saying what is happening at the moment, there's a lot of things happening and they all kind of interconnect on various levels. We have, of course, um, the, 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 what is happening uh, with the pandemic, uh, which is of course also a big problem, but it is coming out of a lab, a lab uh, that uh, of course needs to be investigated because if we have never ending variants of something that is a biological warfare a tool, it's a different thing from a natural disease right. that might eventually reach herd immunity. So all these kind of subjects are very important these days, and they're all part of the great reset, which is the great king set, the great king Satan reset of everything and eliminating uh, basically private property and ownership in the next few years is not only a communist plan, but it's also a satanic plan. Sure. So by the year 2030, you get to this, which yes. is, uh, when I published this book, it was early 2019. Wow. Yep. There wasn't uh, the pandemic, there wasn't anything but the symbol of exactly. the WHO. Yep. Great reason at Davos. Yep. Unbelievable. And, so, and all so, so, so all this is uh, being uh, proposed, just like I wrote about uh, the red flags laws and the taking the guns and everything in volume four, which is also a book in which I describe for the first time how the Sabbatee and Frankis are linked with the Jesuits. So when we go then to discuss the subject of the invis invisible master and we start from Moses, who then of course was replicated in a way by Jesus, and we go in search of the unknown, the invisible master is something that of course comes from something else, which is uh, uh, a tradition of uh, metaphysic, of occultism, of esotericism. How does all this fit in the uh, in the world of today? Now, that's what I'm trying to do with my books for many years, and that's why I'm so censored. And that's why, after I started publishing my books in Italian, they became immediately bestsellers, which doesn't happen for any kind of esoteric books to sell 10, 20. No, absolutely more. not. No. Okay, so to be a bestseller, especially in Italy, where people don't even read many books. And then in the end of 2013, unfortunately, when they understood that I was not only theorizing what I was saying, but I was bringing the people in the street with the pitchforks revolution, and that it was a political thing that I was trying to do to not only awake the people, but to get involved with stopping the new world order sure. in a practical basis, not just sure. theories. Well, that was when, boom, they cut my uh, income again by canceling and blocking my book, release of my books. My publishers dropped me one after the other. And wow. my uh, colleagues, journalists or writers wouldn't have me anymore on the show. They kind of, they distance themselves and, and 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 it was very difficult for me in Italy to survive but fortunately in 2015 I uh, got to meet Alex Jones and Trump uh, was starting his own project they wanted to me to be involved and I became involved with uh, Italians for Trump which was uh, the first organization outside of the United States to support the candidacy not you know, because after he became president, of course, organizations sprang all over, uh, up all over the world. But I, I was actually projecting the Italian community and then the Italo American community, which is very influential here, into supporting Trump. So um, all this happened in 2015. I carried on my work also with my own association. I have my own Masonic order, my own Illuminati order, which I tried to use to bring people in those environments into the good side. Sure. But then it was an almost impossible battle. Uh, the war is not over yet, but the no. battle was lost because I, I was threatened. I was, they broke uh, the, the, the doors of my, the police broke in. They locked me up for three weeks, uh, even in a mental asylum trying to wow. get, I mean, it was insane what they did, the injection things, 
they threatened my wife. My wife, really courageous, resisted, resisted to all these threats and stuff. The mafia threatened me, not only the police. And when I went to the police to say the mafia is threatening me, they didn't care. <laughs> it's all the same. It's all the same. It was the same because okay. the Vatican is the mafia. The exactly. Jesuits in the Vatican are the Cosa Nostra. Yeah. Is the cupola. You know, when they say the cupola mafiosa, the Cosa Nostra, the cupola, yeah, is the cupola of St. Peter's. Exactly. It's the actual St. Peter's chapel. That's the ultimate mafia. And, uh, and of course, I, the, my books uh, were picked up by another publisher, but uh, the censorship started, so the distribution didn't want to distribute my book. Pope Francis de Las Pope, for example, which is another book that I published also in the English language after with a lot of success, in Italy was censored. The distributions didn't want to take that book. They wow. didn't want to take it. They didn't want to. They said, oh, the Vatican doesn't want to take uh, this uh, book into distribution. Nowadays, things are different. Nowadays, aside from uh, my five book deal with CCP uh, Publishing with Brad Olson, I was also able to start my own company with, uh, directly with Amazon, and the books are still distributed. I always uh, tend to say to people, buy them now until they are distributed, because of tomorrow, we don't have any certainty. That's awesome. So, you know, Brad and I are good friends and he, you know, he was the one that told me to read your book. So, you know, very yes. full, full disclosure. So, you and, know, I and, told and, him. And, and, and really when, when he gave me this deal, it was because I came here to America in 2014 and thanks to Sean Stone, who is the son of Oliver Stone, he put me in That's contact right. with Brad and, and Sean is a great guy. I'm sure you sure. know. Yep. And, 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 and what happened though was that uh, I was really in, in a very problematic situation. I should have actually stayed here, but I didn't have the possibility. Actually, I got married with my wife on the 1st of May 2014 here in the US. And, and, and then we went back to Italy because we, you know, it was, we didn't yet have much. We had to translate all these books to publish them with Brad. We had a lot of work to do that actually took years of sure. our lives uh, right. because to translate to those five books, it took approximately two years and a half. No oh, stop. Wow. I'm talking a about time. A, at yeah. times we had to work 15 hours a day, you know, yeah. 10 uh, hours minimum. And it was very, very, and, and this was actually the last book we translated. So, uh, and, and it's the book uh, that uh, originally came out in Italy as volume four. Right. But then Brad said that the people here uh, at the distribution, uh, IPG, I think it's called, in, in Chicago, they wanted to use the name Invisible Master, which I had used in Italy for another book, which was on similar topics, but not exactly the same. I had co-written. And that book, unfortunately, went out of circulation in Italy because the co-writer didn't want to have anything to do with me anymore. So imagine that. It was crazy, the situation in Italy. So I said, okay, brother, I don't have anything else to do. In Italy, I hardly can work. I, can, I will focus on that. So I focus on, on, on work. And then, of course, the work, uh, I started also working with uh, InfoWars and Alex Jones. And that wasn't really uh, helpful at one point because then they started to censor him. And through him, they censored me, of course. And I was already censored before Alex, before everybody else. Remember that. I had already five Facebook accounts closed by the year 2013. You were the first guy censored. Okay, so Leo, this is amazing. And this story mm. and this narrative is amazing. And we're going to continue it. But I have to ask you now, yeah. hindsight, is Alex on the up and up? Is Trump on the up and up? Were they part of this scheme? Are they still a part of it? I mean, do you really know? Have you been able to uncover yet? I know these are... Difficult questions. I mean, this, no, no, no. I can I can answer you very easily. I mean, I um, I haven't been uh, since this new year. Uh, the, I I went on uh, uh, Infowars very little because uh, uh, I was actually the one that on the thirty, I think it was the thirty first of December, the thirty of December it was the last show of the year on Infowars. I actually warned them, you are in for a very bad situation occurring soon in which you will finally realize that the situation is not like you think. Right. 
okay? Because uh, they were pushing his finger that Trump was still in charge. Trump will get out of it uh, as a in the white uh, as a winner. The white hats are coming. Yeah, no, no, but the white hats is an is a complete <laughs> disinformation operation that I don't think. Uh, was ever embraced by Alex. Alex, unfortunately, gave space to people like Steve Pitznik. And Steve yep. Pitznik is a secret. He's it, a, it's a spy. It's, it's a, Absolutely. He used to work in Italy. He's a disinformation operative. Sure. Yep. And, and, yep. and he complete bullshitted everybody. Oh. And, and, and of course, I don't think that even Michael Flynn helped very much. And they were not really... Uh, I warned them. I warned them. I said, listen, listen guys. I mean, I am the number one supporter of Trump. I still think he's a great guy. I think, though, that for the future, if he really wants to get back in the White House, he should completely forget this whole few months and start talking about what we have to do in the future. Because if you focus only on the elections that have been stolen, you're not going to get anywhere. When I, when, when uh, I remember in the middle of November, uh, and I started to have big problems. My main channel, YouTube, was removed with 20,000 subscribers. And then one after the other, they eliminate my wife's ch yep. YouTube channel, everything. Yep. And, but that's okay. It happened, I think, just prior to the election. Then after the election, it increased the censorship. And so I was removed my main Facebook. I, I saw the censorship and I was like, Trump should have done something when he had the possibility. And now it's too late. But Trump, uh, Trump's values, uh, uh, let's say that in, in, when they came to Rome and what Trump did, he respected what we discussed in Rome with Alex the first, uh, I mean, uh, from the very first time. Because they said, Leo, what do you think of supporting Donald J. Trump? It was me, Alex Jones, Rob Dew, the, the future wife of Alex. We were all there in Trastevere in a restaurant where, where, where a few decades before in the 50s, George Adamski had had the lunch with a famous... <laughs> the uh, had had a dinner with a famous uh, guy from the Vatican uh, who was very famous. And was, that, was Valiant Thor there too? No, no, no. I, 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 it was, I, it was, it was Rob Du, the, the, the future wife, Alex, and and, and 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 we discussed this very much in detail. And I said, I believe that Trump can do the job because you can't buy him out, and that's what the new world order wants. Wants people like Obama, they can give seven to eighty million and give right. him a book deal, and he becomes your loyal slave. They want that kind of people. They were afraid of me doing politics because I don't care about the money, even if I don't have the money. That's a different thing. I'm not Trump. I don't have billions. But I have blind faith in God. And at the end of the day, maybe he will bring something <laughs> and I will not start. I'm right. not a rich person. Sure. I took the little money I had and I was able to come here to the United States and start a new life now in 2019. And I'm very glad that God let me do that. Otherwise, I would be dead. Right. I would be dead in a jail cell in Italy. Correct. So, so that is as bad as it was. And, um, and so I'm glad that Trump became this president who broke with the past, who started a new situation, a new, a new ideology, this make America great again, based on everything that is American. I am glad that Alex supported him and I supported him too. I, I don't regret anything I did, but we should have focused on the future. And when it was November, I went on the Infowars show, on Alex Jones show, and I said, we need to focus on Trump 2024. If actually, I said it even before, sorry, I said in the middle of October, I said before the elections, I said, if Trump doesn't manage because here the situation is very uncertain, we should focus on 2024. And then I went, uh, uh, every time I went again, and I said to, to Alex, we need to focus on 2024. They focused too much on this BS of 2020 right. when it was lost, right. and it 
it really damaged the movement. And I hope that, um, that we can, in some way, save this uh, patriotic movement and uh, put uh, Trump or another valid individual in the White House in 2024, because otherwise we are seeing it every day. Uh, things are getting worse and worse. They're going to go after our guns. They're going to go uh, after our freedoms. Right. Uh, we can't talk any longer. Um, I don't have a voice anymore on social media almost. I have to go from one channel to the other. Inventing. At the moment, I must say that my Italian audience is probably more loyal and they are maybe because Maybe because I'm slightly less censored in Italy, but I'm actually very censored even there. So it's not really, I think that they are a little bit more loyal, so they follow me. I, I open like 10 channels and they know that when this channel is closed, they go, they to, go the to the other one. one. Okay, so let me ask you then. Okay, so. So, uh, so my opinion is this. I think that at the moment, unfortunately, Alex is in big trouble. Alex is in a really big trouble. And... Uh, I wish he followed my advice. And uh, I don't know what's going to happen to him or InfoWars because they are in very, very uncertain territory at the moment. Okay, well, let me ask you about the satanic aspect of all of this. Because again, I can make a very cogent argument looking at because you see, culture. The, the thing is this, uh, that, you know, I mean, these people, and I've been in Austin, I've been in Austin, Texas, the head, I've been right. working with these people for years. I know sure. they're genuine. I know that they are real Christians. I know that the people who surround the whole operation of, of, uh, of info are really good-hearted people with their heart in the right place. But the problem now is that they are viewed as enemy number one. This system, this satanic system, doesn't want you to denounce them. And when they have the power, they will eliminate and they will go after, the, after you. Right. So that is uh, ultimately well so that okay so that's my question so again i can make a very good argument that again everything in the popular culture from hollywood to netflix to government to even the military now it all appears to be that satan and his minions are everywhere now they're just well, out and about well, when you said earlier that uh, when you said my opinion of trump i think that trump unfortunately these people know very well how to play with the weakness of a person if that person has too much ego they go there and they and they make your ego go, eh? and then they use the, your weakness to, 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 to manipulate you. The problem is that every person that has been uh, in the White House has been manipulated in some right. way uh, because there is, uh, of course, interest behind the scenes that are uh, not only from this world. And here we go back into the Invisible Master. Right. Right. In the Invisible Master, I... Uh, is the, the subtitle is the puppeteers is in power and it's why is the puppeteers in the power because behind the scenes these rituals these egregores that are created with these rituals so these thought forms that are generated uh, and, and, and at times they are evoking entities not of right. this world into our dimension and all this is done by, by people who in their daily life do something completely different. They're not right. done by some gods dressed up like, sure. uh, you know. So it's very difficult then to, to find out who is really uh, uh, moving this, uh, this, uh, these forces and, and right. how they're moving them. Apart from the Jesuits who are probably the more easy to identify because they are an order from, Borg, from, from, from Rome, Borgo Santo Spirito, the headquarters, they are doing their job. And you know that wherever they are, there is something that is a little bit fishy and that, uh, of course, culminate out after all, like you said earlier also, with the, 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 this whole thing being a big conspiracy, which is a kind of big conspiracy, which is all together. Eh? Yeah, all it's together. all tied together. Yeah. It's all tied together. Do you think that the satanic element, these egregores, you know, these thought form concepts, these demonic whatever entities. I mean, you know, 
I mean, obviously, I'm not going to bring up the Bible or any kind of sacred or ancient text, but I mean, they all talk about, as you said, the revealing, the apocalypse, you've got revelations, yes. you know, 10 times. Is that where we are right now from a timeline perspective that yes. we are right there now and that they are attempting to bring the final battle between, you know, the, the battle of Armageddon? The, you know, the, the because like I explained in this book, uh, Invisible Master, which you have told me to discuss today, the, the thing is that they have gradually uh, broken into that dimension. It's like an invading right. force that we have invited here. Um, and it was the followers of Alistair Crowley, the Jack Parsons of the situation that, that we have also learned to to. to and learn more about uh, lately with that TV series on CBS, which was very well done. Unfortunately, they did only two series, and then after they stopped. Maybe it should have gone on more, but they probably said, okay. Too much truth, yeah. Too much truth. Too much, yeah, too much. Uh, so Jack Parsons, uh, the people in Hollywood, uh, the connections also with the, the early days of Hollywood and everything in, uh, the, 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 in, in the occult movement. And, and then... When you ask uh, me how, for example, the UFO movement came together, I show in this book the actual links with the theosophical right. and the magical world, the occult world, all the groups from Maid Lane with the Borderland Research uh, Society. Yeah? And then also I show the links with uh, George Adamski, the Lo Royal Order of Tibet, the Theosophical Society, the OTO. <laughs> Guys, this is a this is a book like you said it's well researched but it's first of all a book that brings you facts not fiction right it's things right. that you can go and research and i make sure that there is always a footnote that uh, that uh, that is credible with the, with citations that are uh, that are serious i think because I, you see for example when it comes to showing, I don't know, the inside of Bessenburg Castle, where then Michael Aquino in the early 80s does a ritual. And then, he, I mean, these are things that people think is just out of some kind of TV series they have watched on Netflix. But it's not the case. Actually, tell you the truth, Netflix. That's a portal. It's a, a portal. portal. It, yeah. it, 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 it's part of this whole thing. Yes, it is. These are, as you know, these are now scry tablets. These screens allow these beings to enter into our realm. Let me ask you, who is Michael Aquino? Do you think, I mean, again, and you have all of this in your book, you talk about the Vril and the reptilian. Uh, apart from the fact they think that now he's deceased, uh, from what I know. Uh, he's deceased, but before being deceased, he actually went into... Uh, becoming a, 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 a entitled with the uh, I think he, he went in Scotland and bought the title of Baron in some way he managed from the local heraldic society. The it was it was crazy when I saw it I was like shocked that Aquino could manage to do that. Um, he was connected very much with the Jesuits, and he was of course uh, uh, connected with the Jesuits that themselves, so unfortunately, have been often involved with pedophilia. The Jesuits have their own secret societies. I describe the secret societies of the Jesuits in Georgetown in, in this book, volume four of my confession. But uh, in Invisible Master, I actually explain how this portal that uh, was created by the Ger Nazi Germans in Wessenburg Castle by Himmler, was used by Aquino and by the military intelligence uh, who themselves uh, were involved uh, with uh, starting this uh, Temple of Set, which was a breakaway from a faction of the Church of Satan, which was founded in 1966. 1966 is the year zero of Satanism, because in December 1965, it's the end of the Second Vatican Council. So from that moment onwards, you have the start of a new era uh, in Satanism, which uh, will end up with the birth of the Antichrist and with the, 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 the whole call of this Antichrist figure 
which is very well represented in the films of uh, uh, Kenneth Anger, who himself uh, was connected with Alistair Crowley very much, even if he didn't uh, work directly with Crowley. Kenneth Anger, for example, in the film Lucifer Rising, used Donald Camel. And Donald Camel himself uh, was involved in the swing in London, in which there was a group called Chelsea Set, uh, which uh, really led the path for a lot of the revolutions in culture that then we had in the years following. And in the film Lucifer Rising, you see Donald, this Donald Camel, like, and Donald Camel was actually a personal friend of Alice Crowley since he was a child because his father knew Alice Crowley. So, I mean, there was all, all this connection. And then there is, of course, uh, other figures. Uh, but in this book, I try to make people understand that there is also a biographical note, as you notice, yeah. that with my own personal experience in magic and witchcraft from a very early age, how I arrived to all that, my own family links with the Cagliostro, who is regarded very highly by, um, by the Freemasons, by the Illuminati, by people like Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> and that's why you have uh, uh, Cagliostro, uh, Cagliostro's boost, uh, how you say, the, the, the statue in, even in Washington, D.C. Uh, but uh, in, in this book, we have also the reality of the involvement of the Illuminati with rituals to invoke these entities into our right. dimension. And right. It's a process that started a long time ago. John D. But even before, I would wow. say that John D. codified it in probably in a way that, uh, and I talk about it actually also in volume one of my confessions, codified it in a way that uh, uh, brought also a lot of the intelligence world later on right. to work with these entities because John D was uh, the guy who used to call himself 007 for the Queen. Yeah. So uh, he started, uh, and, and, and let's not forget that um, a lot of the intelligence world that comes from, um, from this very early stages of defense from what was actually the Jesuit enemy, the Vatican enemy, because when Elizabeth I was defending herself, he was, she was defending herself from the Vatican. Right, right. So it's kind of like, no? nowadays, nowadays these factions are all united. So it's, uh, it's very much- By the much... way, Amazon says Michael Aquino is still alive, just FYI. Have well, you... uh, if he's still alive, uh, that's good. That's good for him. That's good for him. Uh, I think that. Uh, um, I mean, look at this. Look at his face. Look at his giant bio and all this shit. They celebrate and glorify. Yes. Yes. These pieces of shit. I mean, it's unbelievable. But I mean, again, you know, Bezos is a part of it too, right? I mean, no. But no the interesting problem. thing when it comes to to Michael Aquino it was very interesting the fact that he used the public money to actually go and do a ritual in that Bessenburg castle that was of Himmler. When he came back from that ritual, though, things got a little bit uh, bad for him because at that point he was attacked for his uh, activities uh, that uh, led to an investigation on the possibility of, uh, of pedophilia uh, in, in, a, in a base and everything. It all came out in the open. There was a scandal. Apparently he came out of it. So... Do you, always think, been... do you think he was a demon, Leo? Do you think that a person like him is just harboring a demon entity at all times? I mean, because how can a person like him, you know, illustrious military background, also be associated as the, you know, the founder of the Temple of Set, you know, be associated with pedophilia, be associated with all these other, you know, negative, if not demonic. I mean, how is that even allowed? It doesn't even well, make I sense. Mean, yeah. How is even allowed for the Jesuits or the priest in the Catholic Church to be a bunch of pedophilia? Right, exactly. You'd be raping children. And raping children. And, uh, I mean, it's actually, in the case of the Catholic priest, it's even more because you have to understand one thing then, so why there is this connection with the Michael Aquino and, and the Jesuits and the Catholic Church? First of all, maybe people don't know, but Anton LaVey, when he died, he died in a Catholic hospital and he was crying like a little baby saying, yeah, forgive, you know, he was scared of God's wrath against him. Yeah. So that's, but the thing is that the black mass, 
like I explained in volume 6.66, is a phenomenon that is born within the Catholic Church. It was Catherine uh, de Medici, uh, who is a uh, queen of France, who was the daughter of an important nobleman of Florence, important family, the Medici family, who started the first black mass simply by taking a Catholic priest with the baby, sacrificing the baby during a Catholic mass where everything was reversed. Right. So the real black mass needs to be um, done by a Catholic priest. What I tried to explain in my books uh, and what uh, was explained very well in this very rare booklet uh, called Satan alle Porte di Roma, which was published in the 90s, I had an interview with a guy called Father Gabriele Amort, who himself an exorcist, who Netflix did an did a important documentary. The actual film director of The Exorcist did a documentary of Father Amort. Imagine Father Amort, I think he did something like 70,000 exorcisms in his life. Wow. He, he, was, he died now, he's not no longer with us. He died, I think, five years ago. Um, but he was a guy who became very much in, in, uh, in charge of the, 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 the war with the devil uh, using the exorcism. But exorcism was also a ritual from the Roman ritual, which was castrated in 1998-99 by the Catholic Church which was still working on those reforms of the Second Vatican Council we mentioned earlier. And they basically, what they did, they uh, were taking away certain prayers to make the exorcism not functional anymore. Wow. So Father Amort understood that, and he was heavy, very critical against the Vatican. But Father Amort was an institution because in 1990, is him who created the international organization for exorcists that still goes on nowadays. Right. And, uh, and uh, his work against, the, in his work against the devil, though, he in the end ended up like others before him facing the devil in the Vatican, in those secret societies in the Vatican that do the black masses in the Vatican. So, and, and when they interviewed him, uh, Already in the 90s, in this book, uh, he was saying that the situation was declining and it was probably going to get worse now because we were approaching the millennium. Okay? And all the satanic groups around the year 2000 gathered in Rome to exercise their awkward power. And it was from that point onwards that things really went to the next level Right. Because imagine the year after that, 2001, and then we had, of course, 9 11, and, and all hell that broke loose. Giant, that was a giant occult ritual. So, CERN, what are they doing with CERN? I mean, I know you talk about it in the book, but what is it just to bring Corazon, Lucifer, the minions, just more of them in to rip through the space fabric of time and just destroy all of sentient life? Is that really what they're ultimately attempting to do? And many of those people working there are so brainwashed. They don't even know what they're doing. They're under a form of mind control, correct? Yeah, I mean, people don't realize that the discovery of the so-called particle of God has probably right. changed Higgs. history forever. Yeah, Higgs boss it. Yeah. yeah. And, and what's happening here is that basically CERN uh, wants to bring to the next level the, while uh, up until, uh, you see, I talk about it in this book yeah. because in this book I focus very much on the, uh, the esoteric way of bringing these entities into a uh, dimension, the various secret societies that were involved with it since ancient times, blah, blah, blah. Yep. But then, now, they want to bring it to a scientific level. Right. In a way that is not anymore about, you know, going into the desert here and, and opening a portal by doing certain things. No, but they want them walking down the street Leo, that's what they, they want. They want to just push a button and let them in. So it's 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 it's, it's that that's I think is one of the, the. So when I said in this book my experience with the Stargate, you know, yeah. and we are it's my experience with the Stargate. But nowadays the CERN wants to bring that Stargate to a new level. Yeah, yeah. and um, I hope that people 
understand that uh, we only have nine years to save the planet. We don't yeah. have more than nine years. That's no. it. No. Because right. by 2030, they want to... Uh, they want to... Uh, People will be robots by then. Cyber Satan and transhumanists take over, and that's, uh, that's about it. Because yeah. Cyber Satan... Satan, people think that they see that they can save all uh, all of this reality by embracing Christ consciousness. Yeah. Okay, now let me tell them that Christ consciousness is an invention of the Jesuits. Exactly, it's something that actually the real because you see. Four centuries ago, the Jesuits tried to uh, create this whole thing, the whole movement of ideas around the fact that maybe Jesus had already come back. Right. And then they went into this whole thing around in the year, in the 1600, they went into developing this cosmic Christ idea that then they picked up with Father Pierre Taylor de Cardin who became himself known as the father of the internet and who is being the inspirator of both the exorcist and uh, and uh, Space uh, Odyssey 2001 Space Odyssey, which is the film in which artificial intelligence presents right. itself to the world. And what it does, it screws up the guy. Yep, completely. Yeah. And then and, and then we have though another film that represents very much this day and age and the next le- next stage. And that's a film of that guy we talked about just a moment ago called Donald Cameron. That film is Demon Seed from 1977, I think, 76, 77. This film, Demon Seed, is the film with Julie Christie in which she gets trapped into a smart house and with the artificial intelligence then wants to impregnate her so they can celebrate the whole thing right. and produce a baby right. that will become himself the yeah. product of transhumanism. Yep. And That's, it's exactly very interesting. That's it. That's it right there. Well, it's very interesting also because in that movie, Donna Campbell, by the way, died suicidal in 1996 and he died suicidal because he wasn't happy with the, the editing of his last film, uh, also titled The Devil Something. Uh, it was a film with Christopher Walken. He wasn't happy with the editing of it, wow. allegedly. But the, the fact is that this Donna Campbell guy I mean, uh, that film, it's, uh, it's, it's very prophetic. Uh, the, yeah. the, the Demon Seed is a film that should be reevaluated and people should maybe see it in a different light. Remembering that the director was the guy who is in the part of Osiris in Lucifer Rising of, uh, right. of Kenneth Tang, right at the start of the ritual to invoke the Antichrist on this planet. Lucifer Rising, which Kenneth Tang depicted with this uh, jacket with the rainbow behind and the writing Lucifer rising because the rainbow also represents uh, in a way and, 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 and in my book I talk about the Alamantra working right. and Crowley's first grade and I show the, because people think uh, that this is uh, a uh, reality that is only connected to ufology, no it's connected to the esoteric world, it's actually where it's born from exactly Right. It's all interconnected, like you said, all of it. The demons, yes, all the angels, the UFO, all of, the movement, all of it, the Venetians, the Space Brothers, it's all bullshit, dude. Everything is interconnected. And that's why now uh, we are also seeing a society in which, for example, um, the FBI is uh, behaving the way they're behaving. I mean, the FBI is behaving always in very ambiguous ways. And they seem to always be there and kind of like in an X file episode exactly. in which they right. are dominated by sinister forces behind the scenes. So, I mean, so, so to end the show, and this has been phenomenal, by the way, to end the show, is it really just the same thing? It's just, you know, the Star Wars mythos of the light side versus the dark side, as you argue in the back of this book. And it's the fallen angels against the whatever you want to call them, the angels of light. And it's just one gigantic cosmic interdimensional, you know, third dimensional aspect of our existence. And so who you serve is based on your, you know, your vibrational frequency versus 
you know, the dark side. And obviously the dark side cannot affect you as long as you don't give them any homage, correct? Uh, well, there is a big problem here, though. There is also the God factor that you left out. It's true what you said about the consciousness vibration and the fact that, of course, uh, you can uh, also karmically activate or disactivate certain things that uh, then work out in the great wheel of the Dharma. But the thing is, ultimately, that uh, we are immortal. Right. We are immortal, we just don't know it. Spiritual so, beings having a physical existence, right. Okay, yeah. But then, okay, that is fine. But the problem is that uh, the Christians were hidden this truth after 500 years. Right. They were immediately, they were pushed. But the, the thing is that we still need to rely on God in order our faith has to be very well calibrated in God right. if we want to uh, in, with anything we do and also with our discipline because people um, that uh, practice uh, spiritual disciplines nowadays and you are talking you are right about your map of consciousness uh, they, they need to have a discipline that is also uh, completely devoted to God because in this, day and age, in this day and age there will be a division between the people who believe in God and the people who believe in matter and those people are exactly right. Satan that's exactly right. It's they believe right. It, it comes down to being in total surrender to the aspect that God yes. or the, the divine mind is all there really is. You know, yes. we're but waves and particles of the divine mind. Leo, Absolutely. if somebody, this, this podcast is amazing and I have such great gratitude in my heart for you. How, let me, I'm going to show your website right now, but how can people work with you? How can they connect with you? How can they contribute to your work? Thank you so much for showing my uh, website. I always rely on my website, my latest articles. You will find also the links to my latest books uh, and uh, also to my latest YouTube uh, channel, which uh, I've been changing the last couple of months very often because unfortunately I keep on being uh, censored. But we are trying to survive. So every now and then, I will always uh, bring uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, this videos uh, to the public, even if now I don't have any more 20,000 subscribers. I have only, as right. you can see here, uh, more models. For, but it's still important for me to be present on YouTube. A lot of people say, oh, you just give up on YouTube. I have opened up an, a, a, a channel on BitChute. I have opened now very recently an account on Rumble. But I tell you the truth. We need to continue our battle, even in the, uh, and, and I'm present, of course, on Gab, but we need to um, continue our battle, even in those uh, uh, social uh, networks like Facebook and others that don't welcome us, because uh, it's, it's, it's too easy for them to just uh, scrap us off the map. And so, I mean, you know, I, I have not been involved with Sandy Cook or any, or, or any kind of thing. I am an honest guy giving you my own experience, saying the same things, trying to, of course, update you with everything, you know. But uh, I've been fighting New World Order since uh, uh, 2006, officially outside of the realms of my secret society that I was involved with. And now I risk extinction. I don't think this is very much, this is fair, because I think that there's a lot of people who have grown up listening to Leo Zagami, who want to continue listening to Leo Zagami, and that still have now problems finding where is my next podcast or my next thing. So I, th I think the main thing is to go on my website, because from right. there I will always indicate where I am. Yeah, they, can't, they can't take that down yet, at least yes. not yet. Yes. Yes, hopefully not even in the future, but uh, I had to move my website to a special, this, uh, I mean, it's actually the servers are in a particular state, uh, which Perfect. is out of the, so it's, it's, it's all this kind of thing, no? that you have to do to protect yourselves and, I know. And, and, and all kinds of security things to avoid being hacked every two minutes and all that. But I have uh, the last few months a big problem in reaching my English speaking audience. And so thank you so much for giving me your platform um, because I, 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 I 
really miss being able to relate to my English speaking audience. As I said well, earlier, my Italian audience seems to be more perceptive in moving from one channel to the other and, and not giving up so easily on me. Beautiful. Well, well uh, unfortunately, me, me just, though, just, the you QAnon, on, the, the, go ahead, go ahead. just to close on what we were saying also earlier, the QAnon phenomenon has brought a lot of people astray and confused their minds, yes. and a lot of people who were really with us before then got lost in all this rubbish. Sure. And I hope that ultimately they will come back to, to the credible sources that, uh, that uh, and, and people like you who are offering an excellent uh, job in, in researching Fed at certain things. Awesome, Leo. Well, amazing. And, and again, you have my promise. And then, of course, if, if you want to uh, help me out, uh, I have still uh, PayPal. <laughs> they have closed several PayPals. <laughs> but uh, now I have PayPal me slash Leo Zagami show. Uh, this is my third PayPal. Actually, they closed down four because wow. they, they posed the, the third one for a little while. So open another one. Then they closed that one. Then I went back to the third. <laughs> but well, I promise like, your PayPal link will be in this show. And uh, again, this has been such an honor. And I, again, I, I promise you, you have my promise that I will promote you. Uh, and I will have you back on here for as long as yeah, I Yeah, I mean, you, 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 you of course, uh, um, said we discussed this book. But I mean... Uh, only regarding this book, there is so many things that still oh, today yeah. we were not maybe capable of fully uh, discussing because, uh, as you can see, these books are three, four, five hundred pages books. It's yeah, very difficult to synthetically put them through in one episode. Yeah. But uh, thank you so much for trying at least to uh, present. So, oh things. no, this has been an amazing podcast. So, guys, please support the amazing works of Leo Zagami for all the people that come on the Jay Campbell podcast. It's very important so he can continue his work. And let me just say, remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. <laughs>